The following program is made possible by the friends and partners of GodQuest Ministries. Who made God? From the CTN studio in the Pensacola, Florida, this is the Creation Today show with Eric Oven and Paul Taylor. And in this show, we're going to be talking about why the presuppositional approach that we keep recommending is not a circular argument. We'll also be talking to high school students about how to cope with exam questions and assignments on evolution. And we'll also be answering that age old question, who made God? Who did make God? If you have questions, send them into questions at creationtoday.org. Of course, you can follow us on Twitter. Remember, we believe the Bible is absolutely true and scientifically accurate. Welcome back to the Creation Today Show. We are excited because I want to talk about this issue of who made God. It's a common question, objection to Christianity. The idea of, hey, if everything has a designer, then God needed a designer too. If everything has a creator, God needed a creator too. So I'm looking forward to the show. It is, and we're going to answer that question, but not yet. Just watch the space. <laughs> we <laughs> do a have little a... teaser there. We're almost like professionals now. We yeah, almost, yeah, yeah. Yeah. almost. <laughs> Almost. Almost. Uh, we uh, do have a couple of announcements. My good friend Mark Spence from Way of the Master is going to be joining us for the Proof of God conference in Orlando, Florida. It's going to be on 10 12 12. So make sure and put that on your calendar. You're not going to want to miss that. If you want to get information, you can go to proofconference.com and check that out. That's right. You'll also find uh, that Cy Ten Brug and Kate will be there and Carl Kirby and lots of interesting speakers. It's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. It really is. So join us in Orlando, Florida on 10, 12, 12 for the Proof of God conference. You know, we've been talking quite a bit about a 3D animation film, which we are extremely excited about. It's and you, in progress it right is. now. It I'm is. Excited. We know the uh, we know that the uh, the chap doing it is working, beavering away at this very moment, yep. and making sure that it's all it's all uh, looking good. And you can find out something about that at GenesisSeries.com. Yep. So go to that. It's gonna it's, that's going to be very exciting indeed. Hey, if you'd like to see us in person, we would love the chance to meet you. Uh, you can check out creationtoday.org and look at the events tab to find out if we're going to be in an area near you anytime soon. If we're not, get it on the schedule. Make it happen, man. What are you waiting on? That's right. You know, we said in the last show that uh, people sometimes say, why aren't you coming to our areas? So, you know, I'll just repeat again. It's because you haven't invited us yet. <laughs> Get that information to us. We like we'll going where see. we're invited, don't we? we? <laughs> it would be a bit silly if we just turned up to a church and started that speaking. That would. Yeah. I've thought about yeah. it so many times after I've heard what's being said. I've thought about getting up and just, anyway, I haven't <laughs> done that yet. Don't have that boldness yet. Well, we've got a question now from uh, Braden, and I don't think he's a fan of ours. Evidently not, based on his question. Let's, uh, let's get into this and, and start answering some biblical and scientific questions here. Yeah, he says, uh, he says, when I see a Bible, I say, it's a book, so somebody must have written it, rather than, it's a book, so somebody must have written it, and it must be the infallible Word of God. Hmm. Now, think about it really hard, he says, and ask yourself this, why has God seen fit not to convince me, even to deceive me. My rationality is, you believe, part of his creation, he says. So why didn't he make evidence which could have satisfied it? Evidence that does not presuppose God, but still proves his existence. If you believe in God, then God is tricking me. God is hiding himself from reason, and he hasn't given me a better way to understand and operate in the world. Why would he do that? Why can't a rational person be convinced of God? Don't recourse to the Bible. That's asking me to accept an irrational conclusion. Wow. Uh, I don't know if he's being sincere, uh, Braden. I certainly hope that you're being sincere and really wondering, hey, how come I can't be convinced? What is my problem? Why can't I be convinced? I'll just tell you, our uh, history of dealing with people, typically, they don't want to be convinced. They don't want anything because the Bible says, they desire their own sin. They, they walk after their own lusts. That's the reason people scoff at the Bible and make fun of the Bible. So I hope you're sincere. If you're sincere, I think we got some great information for you. 
Uh, but if you're not, then no answer will ever, ever satisfy you. It just isn't going to happen. And that's the problem with the, the quest, with the question as posed, because it's self-refuting. He says, don't yeah. recourse to the Bible. That's asking me to accept an irrational conclusion. Yeah. Well, if we accept that particular statement that he's saying and not recourse to the Bible, then we're accepting his uh, conclusion that the Bible is irrational. And we do not accept that conclusion, nor in fact do the majority of discoverers of the modern scientific era, who Correct. were mostly people who believed the Bible to be true. My question would be this, if you don't want this to be the foundation, then what would you purport to be the foundation? Where do you gain knowledge? The Bible says it's the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. So where do you suppose we can get knowledge from? Now, we already know what they would say to this. They would say, well, we have the ability to think. We have the ability to reason. We've got our senses. We can sense things. So through our senses, we can, we can perceive what is, what is real and what is truth. But where did you sense that? Where did you perceive that? Uh, what, which one of your senses told you that you can only perceive truth through your senses? I mean, we know that that isn't true. We know that you cannot rely on what you perceive to be truth. Uh, I mean, I knew that uh, just this weekend trying to hang curtain rails in my house, you know, <laughs> and you, you look at it and you think, yeah, that's going to be about four feet, you know, that's required there. And then you get your tape measure out and you measure it and it's not, you know, <laughs> it's not what you think it is. Yeah. And then you look at it and you think that's going to be horizontal and, it, and then you actually get your spirit level there and you find it's not, this is what's horizontal. We are actually very, very poor as human beings yeah. in judging these things. And if we're poor at judging actual physical quantities like that, then we're going to be very poor indeed at judging the moral uh, uh, claims and actually measuring ourselves against that. We need an, an independent a measure, standard. Yeah, an independent a standard measure. to be able to measure them. And if you're saying that you know truth, if you're saying that you know what is truth, then you've got to have something to actually measure that against. And what people say is they believe truth to be something that's good and a falsehood to be something that's not good. Well, where do we get that from? Right. The answer is we get that from the Bible. That's our only standard that says so. If, if we don't actually accept the Bible, then why not? say that uh, uh, different people can have different standards. You know, um, Hitler thought it was a good idea to go around killing Jewish people. Yeah. I think most of us, and I hope this uh, writer as well, would agree that is not a good thing. It's an intensely evil thing to do, one of the most evil things that's been done on this planet. But if you're not going to start from the Bible, you're not going to start from a knowledge of God, what right have we actually to say whether that's correct or not. We don't. It's just every man's opinion for himself. It's what, what do you believe? Okay, well, I believe differently. And, and we just have to accept that. It would take away any kind of cultural revolution. It would take away any kind of, uh, of uh, attempt to go to another country and tell them they're doing things wrong because they're allowed to do whatever they want to do. That's what they've decided. Yes. They, so whether they voted on it or not. You know, I was reading a blog uh, today from Ray Comfort, and he said uh, it was entitled The Faith of the Skeptic. Skeptics love to say, well, we don't have faith. We depend on science. And he goes and shows them they have faith in lots of stuff. I mean, they have faith that what the scientist is telling them is true. They have this one guy was talking about how well, I, I, don't, I don't have faith. I believe in science and, and radiometric dating. And he's like, have you ever done radiometric dating? <laughs> yes. You have faith in what they're telling you about radiometric dating is what it comes down to. That's right. Faith is the very foundation. Now, the question is, what is your foundation? What is your faith going to be based on? Is it going to be based on man and our opinion and our senses, which we know can deceive us? Or is it going to be based on the God of the Bible? And our, your senses can deceive you really, really well, just so you know. Do a little experiment. Okay, right here, while you're watching this, I want you to say the word um, silk five times. Ready? Silk, 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 silk. silk, silk, silk. 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 Say it again, silk. Silk, 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 silk. silk. Okay, silk. what do cows silk. drink? Silk. Not silk. Milk. <laughs> milk, no, not milk. Water, cows drink water, they give milk. You are, we, it's very easy to get deceived and there's lots of little tricks like that you can play on people to, to show them that you can't necessarily trust your senses. We've got to have a standard and our standard is the Word of God. We'll be back after this.
Welcome back. You're watching Creation Today. We got a little something we want you to do based on that last segment. I'd like you to say the word shop five times right there wherever you're at. Ready? Shop, 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 shop. shop, 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 shop. shop. Say it shop. one more time, five times. Ready? Shop, 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 shop. What do you do when you come to a green light? Stop. You go at a green light. It is so easy to get confused, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Especially if your name is Paul Taylor. Yeah. No, thanks for playing along. Uh, but tra there traffic are... lights must be Brit different in Britain. <laughs> you got them different <laughs> over there. Uh. Hey, we got another great question here from a young lady who's in school asking for help. She's saying, hey, I'm being taught biology. Obviously, she doesn't believe in evolution. But uh, I-N-A, Ina, is that how you say that? I don't know. Ina? I presume so. It's... Ina. I don't know. Uh, Ina. Uh, she says, I'm about to take an exam probably next year or something in science and biology. I live in Norway. That's, that's where your forebears come from. That's exactly right. Volden Stogen Tilly Dog. What was that? I have no idea, but I think I said hello to him. I hope so. <laughs> I hope so too. She says, I live in Norway and I'm almost 17 years old. I need to take science and biology to finish high school, but I don't go to school. I'm going to take it privately, but I don't want to take it because I'm going to learn about the Big Bang and evolution and all that stuff, but I got to have that in order to pass the exam with the least, excuse me, with at least an average grade because it costs money. And if I don't, I can't finish high school. I don't know what to do because I believe in creation, but they want me to believe in evolution and only ask me about evolution on the exam. What should I do if I don't believe in anything they are saying? And yet, when I answer in the exam, I have to answer questions like, do you still think we're evolving? I mean, what am I supposed to answer that without getting an F? I'm so frustrated. Please help. I don't think I could study evolution uh, for several months and not get affected. But at the same time, I need a high school diploma. Help, please. What do I do? Right. Uh, what's your faith based on? Yeah. And it's very important that your faith is solid, that it's based on uh, what the Bible teaches. And in fact, then there's nothing really can shake you from that. There are going to be lots of things all around us frequently that we don't believe. And if you're learning about something, that doesn't mean you have to actually necessarily have to believe what you are being taught and what you're learning. Now, from a sort of more global point of view, I could say that it's going to be great if there are plenty of creationists out there who thoroughly understand evolution yes. and can really argue about it from first principles. Um, you know, it is. Uh, I, I know somebody uh, uh, close to me who's uh, who recently got a, a first class degree in zoology. I think and, I know who that was. Yeah, and uh, are we allowed to, to say is uh, she getting a job over there, and we can't talk about it? it we'll have to be careful on that okay. subject. I think, but it, it, the point is that she, she believes that what the Bible says is true, and she has a first class degree in zoology. Now, um, what? Uh, where do we go from there? She knows biology. She knows evolution thoroughly. She has a, a great deal of information about evolution. It hasn't shaken the belief there in what the Bible says about Genesis. So she understands it. She just doesn't believe it. And we say this all the time. When you're in school and being taught evolution, you can learn the information. Just don't swallow it. Just don't believe it. Yes. Be able to tell them what they want to say. A, a great way to answer test questions if it's not just uh, uh, you know, a multiple choice and you can actually write something in. You can say, if the test question comes up about evolution, you can say, most scientists believe, or most scientists say, and then write in what they say. Right. You don't believe that, but that's what they want in order to get the grade. Yes, and remember that you're being perfectly honest then, because we know that the theory of evolution is believed by the majority of biologists. The majority, of course, do not constitute scientific proof. <laughs> that's right. Because science has <laughs> never proceeded by majorities. Correct. You know? If it had have done, then... Uh, you know, there's so many scientific oh, discoveries boy. would never have been made because the most scientific discoveries have been made in the teeth of, against what the majority have said on a particular yeah. subject. And often many scientists The moon have is suffered. not glass. It's not perfectly smooth. It's not you made don't of bleed green people cheese. to make them better. It's that's not made right. out of green cheese. Yeah, it, it, these things are very, very important, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, that's a good example, isn't it, about uh, not bleeding people and so on. It was, Pasta, yeah. was it Pasteur or was it Lister? I get these two confused. Lister, I believe. Uh, who, uh, who developed the idea that... Uh, things had to be sterile in order to, uh, you know. Joseph Lister. Yes. Uh, I, so we get Listerine, that idea. That's right, yes. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, but, you can learn this information. Scientists throughout history have had to deal with things that people believed that were not true, and in the face of that make progress. 
A good friend of mine right now is in his master's degree program. Uh, he lives across the street from me. He's in his master's degree program. He is now a teacher of evolution uh, in the university, and he doesn't believe it. But he uses that as a strong Christian to be able to slide doubt into people's minds. And he says, we need more Christians. We need more yes. creationists in these schools teaching this stuff. We need more people that are willing to put up with it to get the degree to then go be a light in darkness. We do indeed, yes. Um, we need Christians to be teachers in the public school system. Oh, boy, and, yeah. you know, we've, we've talked a lot about uh, uh, school systems. And, you know, we're, we're great advocates of um, Christian education, or independent Christian education and uh, homeschooling yeah. and so on, because, uh, you know, we've no evidence of any time when the Israelites sent their uh, children to the Philistines to be educated. Uh, you know, there's the argument that children should be salt and light. And, you know, that's, that's not an argument that we tend to like to use. Yeah, uh, don't because, send your kids off to the battlefield. Because that's you not be their the job. Teacher. But the teachers are yeah. in the battlefield. And it's great when Christians, uh, who, Christian teachers say, we need to go into mm. those, uh, those public schools and we need to, uh, to teach in those particular situations. So what's the sort of sum of uh, advice that we're going to give to Ina then, Eric? What we're going we're gonna to say, well, you said answering questions perfectly honestly by saying what well, some scientists say or even most scientists say prefacing that that's perfectly honest i think you can do that even if you ask the question do you think we are still evolving yeah. you can twist that and say well many scientists would say uh, that that these things are happening actually there's always debate on that i very much doubt that an exam a high school exam would ask that because even the evolutionists aren't sure on that <laughs> i know that professor steve jones uh, one of the leading evolutionist professors in uh, in england says well human beings are not evolving they've come to the end and um, this is it. Yeah. This is as far as, we, how would you know that? Yeah. That's an, wow. Some of the claims they make just absolutely surprise me. Uh, I, love, I love to use, and, and you got to be careful, this is probably more on a college level, but uh, when the teacher or the professor teaches that there are no absolutes, there is no right and wrong, and then he gives you an exam, you can answer whatever you want. You can say anything. You can cheat if you want. And then when you get called in and questioned, you can say, but, but you said there's no right and wrong. Yeah. Everything is relative. Yeah. So uh, really putting it back on the teacher and using that, you got to be careful there. Now, I'll tell you this. For the students out there that are Christians and don't believe in evolution and want to learn how to do this, if you are not good in school, if you do not pay attention, if you don't do your yes. homework, if, you, if you're not a, a good student, if you don't do your best, do not say, hey, I'm a Christian and I don't believe that. You're not helping anybody, you or other, other Christians. You're actually hurting the name of Christ. You make sure you're doing good, your best, you're getting your homework done on time, you're doing your projects, and you're being obedient, you're not one of the goof off kids, then you can say, hey, I got a question, some serious questions about that. Uh, we actually have a couple books, uh, Help on Being Taught Evolution, available yes. through the Creation Store. And uh, those are some really good resources to teach you how you can talk to uh, your teacher or professor about what they're teaching. That's right. So make sure, make sure that you've got all those in line and... Uh, yeah, g keep those going and, and teach the truth. Be a light in the darkness if you can. And if not, well, then don't swallow that information. Hey, we got more to talk about the, uh, who made God is our question right after this. Help! I'm being taught evolution in my Earth Science class. This unique book gives public school earth science students, like me, practical steps to confront evolution in the classroom. Written in an e-conversation format between a student and Dr. Hoven, it is a fun, easy read that helps equip public school students to defend the truth in a respectful manner. Welcome back. You're watching the Creation Today show with Paul Taylor and Eric Hoven. Well, we've been having some really great questions to answer, but you know, sometimes we get lots of questions thrown at us. There are, there are questions that are thrown at us by people who really don't want to hear an answer. Yeah. They want to avoid things. And there are some standard questions, therefore, that quite often, because they can sound a little bit puerile to begin with, that we tend to miss over them. Well, we're going to have actually tackle one of those questions now. 
What would you say is the number one avoidance question that people will bring up if they really don't want to talk about Christianity? No question. Number one avoidance question is, well, then who made God? Because you know, we keep going back to God. Well, then who made him? And it's usually said in this sort of way, you know, you're sat across the table to someone and you're saying, can I share something with you about, uh, about the Lord Jesus Christ? And they say, no, I, you can't share that. After all, who made God? Ha-ha, <laughs> ha-ha, I've got you. <laughs> yeah, I've got exactly you, that's it. That's what they do. Yeah. The question itself is a terrible question. It shows that anybody that asks this has a wrong understanding of who God is. That's right. The idea of God being made means he's not God, so you don't call him God. So the very question itself is, well, to be honest, it's kind of a silly question, but yet it's one that people think is so intelligent. Well, if design demands a designer, then who designed the designer? And he's got to, you know, that's a Richard Dawkins saying, and he's got to be much more complex than this designer. That's right. Quite say it that's like right. And, and I wanted us to uh, be able to answer this question because a young man wrote to us uh, with, a, you know, said quite a bit yeah. of confusion about this. And, you know, full marks to, uh, this has come from Danny, and he says, I was talking with friends about the Bible, and this is absolutely marvelous. I'm pleased that young people are talking to their friends about the Bible and sharing their yeah. faith because that is very important. You do not need to know the answer to everything to start sharing your faith. That's exactly right. Just get busy yes. and trust me, it'll make you dig into God's yeah. Word more. I wrote a blog about yeah, that once. That's right. So he goes on to say, one of his friends made a question that made him confused. I didn't know what to say. The question was, who created God? Mm. And I said, well, that's our belief. Was I right? And yeah, actually, you were right. There's a few more things that we could say about that. And uh, you, you're absolutely right, Eric. Uh, Richard Dawkins uh, actually said the same yeah. question in far more flyery language, yeah. using lots and lots of complicated words. <laughs> when you actually boiled it down, his statement was, well, who made God then? Ah, ha, right. ha. And it's the same sort of attitude. It is. And I, it blows my mind how people can ask this question and not see the, the problem with it, well, it doesn't when I realize that they're willingly ignorant and they're deceived, but the problem with the very question is it assumes God had a maker. Yes. So the question is a terrible question. Linguistically, it doesn't make sense. You know, the very, the very sound that we make with our throats and we say the word God is, uh, in English, the word that has been developed to describe the creator. Yes. That's what the word is for. It means the one who created everything, who is therefore before all things. That is the whole point of the word. So actually, on a, even on a linguistic level, it doesn't make sense to ask who made God. Yeah, it, you're exactly right. Now, it's the almost Bible. equivalent to saying, uh, uh, why are ducks green? <laughs> yeah, that's true. It's a question that doesn't really make any sense. Why is the moon made out of green cheese? Yes. Yeah. Why is the earth a ball full of gas? Yes. <laughs> it, the question doesn't itself make sense. You, you, right. it's, a, it's a terrible question to ask, yet people have promoted this as some great you know, intellectual way to get rid of the idea of God. Well, let me ask you something. What's your other choice? I mean, if you take God out of the picture, you're left with nothing. You're left with matter created itself. You're left with giving God-like properties to either time, uh, space, or matter. Something has to act like God out there. And you do all this just to avoid the truth that the Bible says you already know in your heart. The Bible says you know that God is God, and you suppress that truth in unrighteousness. Stop suppressing the truth. Recognize and realize God did not have a maker. God did not have a creator. God did not have a designer. God is eternal. Matter of fact, the Bible talks about that, doesn't it? How etern God is eternal. Uh, Psalm 90, what was that one? Psalm 90, Psalm 90 verse, verse two, 2 says, uh, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He goes from everlasting to everlasting. You don't put time on God. He's not locked inside of time like we are today. He was not created. You got another one? We've got one here in Genesis chapter 21 and verse 33. Uh, then Abraham planted a tamarisk tree in Beersheba and there called on the name of the Lord, the everlasting God. First Timothy 1 17, now to the king eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God be honor and glory forever and ever. And you got to realize God claims himself. He tells us himself. 
He is eternal. He had no beginning. He has no ending. Yeah. Since the Bible contains so much information, you know, and we have to assume that if uh, an atheist wants to ridicule the Bible, that they there have therefore read it through in order to criticize mm -hmm. it, which is probably not the case actually in many cases. But uh, uh, since the Bible contains so much information, you would perhaps think that if this was a necessary argument, that the Bible would contain what amounts to a high school essay on uh, the existence of God. You know, let's have all yeah. the arguments on the existence, for the existence of God against the existence of God. Let's weigh them up. <laughs> weigh the, and weigh the... But actually, the Bible doesn't start that way. Yeah. The Bible starts by saying, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Why does the Bible start that way? Because God is the most important focus for our thinking and for yes. our understanding. Speaking of thinking, we address this issue itself, showing that um, without God, you can't know anything at all. Right. It would be impossible to even have knowledge without God. We address that in a new uh, CD entitled Think, where we just go through it, Sites and Bergen Kate and myself on a radio program, and it just covered the topic of, of arguing for the existence of God, the idea that everybody knows God. It covered it so well that we just put it on CD and wanted to make that available for people because it really did a good job with that. So That's I encourage right. you to get that. Another resource is The Ultimate Proof of Creation by Jason Lyle showing and going through the truth that God doesn't have a maker. You know, you have to have God from the very beginning to get anywhere. It's not that you add up all these proofs and these proofs equal God. It's that without God, you don't get all these proofs. Nothing happens without God. You see, if you say who made God, then whoever made God is the God of that God. So yes. then you have to ask who made that God, in which case there must be another God who made that God. So there must be, you have to ask who made that, <laughs> that God. Did. And you get into an infinite progression. It is much more logical to say everything was made by yeah. an infinite God. That's exactly right. Oh, well, I appreciate you guys writing in and we uh, would love answering your questions. Please continue to send them in to questions at creationtoday.org. That is our show. If you want to join us on Facebook, you can do that. Facebook.com slash creationtoday. Uh, or Twitter, twitter.com slash creation today. Actually, no. You, yeah, twitter.com slash creation today. Right. Or and then at creation, creation today. Today's. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, this has been a production of God Quest Ministries. Thank you for joining us in this program, and we'll see you next time. God bless. This program is available on DVD by visiting creationstore.org or by calling 877-479-3466. To order this episode, use the item number displayed on your screen.